cardboard it is, was, and always has been a crap. You cannot come down here and harass these guys. It's against the fucking law. I'm not doing anything wrong. All I'm doing is riding my skateboard. What? There's no signs no, over there. Board. I'm trying to be nice to you. No, I, there's no. I don't want you. I don't want you to be nice to me. I want you to get the hell out of here. You're not supposed to be. Not supposed to be here. Property definition. It's supposed to be filming the property definition. Okay. So, we're out of here. Shake your beer down. You just stay here for a little bit. I'm gonna watch the video. Did you read the signs? What you talking about? Okay. Yes, my dude. How old are you? I'll put you off and you off the hand so I'm going to get you my car. Oh, just because we're trying to have fun and we're not destroying nobody's property, doing nothing to hurt nobody, not robbing nobody, hurting nobody, you know, nothing, nothing bad. We're just trying to have fun and it's a crime. Skateboarding. It has come a long way from what it was 65 years ago. It has become a prominent culture of its own, with its daring maneuvers, rebel attitude, and its strong sense of camaraderie. Skateboarding originated in the 1950s from Southern California surfers who wanted the same experience they had in the water, on the land. The earliest boards were small 1x4 wooden boards with metal rollerblading wheels. The only tricks done were smoothly turning and weaving along the sidewalk to imitate the surfing experience. In 1962, a skate shop in SoCal, Val Surf, owned by Bill Richards, began selling actual sets of skateboards. This was the first official skate shop ever. Just a year later, in 1963, it became widely recognized as a sport for teenagers as well-known companies such as Jax, Hobby, and Makaha began conducting skateboarding competitions. Then came 1965. It was horrible. Skateboarding companies began folding as the media and newspapers began to denounce skateboarding as a fad, and a dangerous, rebellious one at that. It resulted in a lull in skateboarding, and the only ones who were still continuing the art were ones that were making boards at home. These boards' wheels were made up of clay or metal, both non-durable and both extremely hard to ride. If you hit anything in the sidewalk bigger than a grain of sand, the board would stop and you would get a mouthful of cement. Luckily, Frank Nasworthy came to the dying industry's aid with the invention of the urethane wheel. Still used today, they are soft, durable, and a lot easier to ride. Skateboarding had survived. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word skater? Is it drugs, rebelliousness, vandalism, lawbreakers, or if you're really old, hoodlums? Because to a certain extent, it's all true. But that's where the society stops and skateboarding continues. It's so much more than that. And people don't get it because they're on the outside looking in. Skating is about self-improvement, building strong relationships with others, and the ability to freely express yourself without anyone's judgment. Skating has an immense impact on society. It has become an international pastime, especially in places like Vancouver and Barcelona as well as the United States. 5.5 million people watch the X Games, most of them being kids between 12 and 17. Skating is the second most popular sports event watched by these kids, beating out the Super Bowl. The act of skating itself gives an outlet to these kids who without it would express themselves in much less productive ways. This is why skateboarding in Maribel is so popular. We're not wanting to hurt anybody, we don't want to do anything wrong, we just want to skate and let our minds run free, doing it in a positive way, getting out and having fun with our friends.
first started skateboarding uh, two of my buddies well, I was actually BMXing at the time but two of my buddies was skating and uh, I was probably about 10 years old it's probably about 1997 something like that and uh, he gave me my first board it was an element bill pepper and uh, kind of just started skating after that what got me into skateboarding was skateboarding I mean have you ever watched a skateboarder have you seen any of the tricks that any of them has done in your head you're in your head you know you're thinking how how can he do that like what what does he do in order to do that so that's what I was thinking I had a skateboard as a kid but I didn't know how to do anything it wasn't until I was in middle school that I actually picked one up really took an interest in it and started from there and that's probably like 10 or 11 years ago it was just kind of friends in my class were doing it at the time. There was like a couple people and then I met uh, met my friends Cody and Ryan and Thomas and that's where it started. And every day I would, every weekend I would be out just trying to learn something whether it was at my house or I'd go to Sandy Springs Park or Springbrook Park. Always trying to learn something just because it was so fun. I would have so much fun just being out with my friends and the best thing about it, you just have no, there's no limits, there's no boundaries to what you can do. And the best thing about it, you don't have to listen to a coach ram crap down your throat on how it's got to be done. The thing is, you can do it however you want. Definitely a lot of friendships, good times. Just wonderful memories. My buddies now, definitely. And it, skateboarding is like, we're just like a big family. It's like a... It's kind of like brotherly love, honestly. It's it's not like having a childhood friend that you know you didn't grow up with skating. It's just it's a different kind of bond, you know. It's just uh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like the closest friends, really, because you're all going out every day. You're all skateboarding together. Like I don't know, that's where I got most of my friends from. Cause I didn't go to school here, so I had to get all my friends from skateboarding. Pretty much. Um, I did go to school here and. Where I met most of my friends was through skateboarding. I went to school with them, found out they skated, and we instantly hooked up, you know, after school and went to the streets and everywhere we went, we either got hassled, kicked out, or just disrespected. Some of the things I had to deal with whenever I was skating was, uh, we was just skating shuffleboard and we was heading back to the car and, uh, this cop stopped us and gave us all tickets. It was me, B, Wilbur, Javi. Dookie Matt and Ricky Bobby. We all got tickets. Honestly, dude, I don't even know. I was not skateboarding. Skateboarding. I was actually holding my board. We was all holding our boards. Uh, he just stopped us and gave us tickets. He said we were skateboarding. There's no reason behind it. They just give tickets for no reason. Really? It's not. A, it's not an illegal sport. I mean, it's not an illegal thing to do. You just. I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. Um. Uh, cops. That's a big one. Big one, for sure. I mean, I've had to go to court to, you know, pay tickets for skating on somewhere that I wasn't supposed to, where signs weren't posted. Uh, I've had cops take my board, you know, a board, usually the whole deck together is like, what, $100 to $120? Yeah, sometimes $150. So, you know, back when I was a kid, 16, 17, didn't have a job, if I lost my board, then I might, I might, I, I didn't, but I would have turned to something like, you know, I'm out board, let's go do something, and yeah. we would have gotten into some trouble. If I would have had my board, I would have just been like, oh, let's go hit the streets. I think skateboarding's great, because of all, I've made so many different friends from it, friends that I'm gonna have forever, that I consider my best friends that I would go to anything, you know, if I was in trouble or anything, whatever, if I needed help, had advice, needed advice, whatever. But another thing, when skateboarders are together, they don't, you know, there's all this racism in the world and all that crap. A skateboarder doesn't, they don't see your race or whatever ethnicity you are. Yeah, they don't see, they don't see a gender either. There's, there's gay skateboarders out there. We don't care. We want to see the, we want to see the tricks you do. We want to see your gnarly tricks that you do. We don't, for real, I, I can't even think of a time whenever I've seen racism and skateboarding together. Everyone, there's so many different races that's into it, cultures and stuff. 
people in Afghanistan are even picking up skateboards. And you know there's nothing out there. But yeah, I think it's great that all these different people can get together and they touch base with one, you know, with, with one thing and everybody gets along and just loves to do this one thing. They put all differences aside no matter what's going on in the world and they just do it for the fun of it. I would love to see this community get a skate park. I think Maryville in itself deserves a skate park. Uh, a lot of the kids around here, there's troubled youth that I've met and there's people that are getting older around my age that they don't have much to do so they get in trouble or they get thrown in jail because they're out doing something destructive and like I can't tell you how many times I've talked to somebody like yeah man it'd be so sick if Maribel had a skate park and I think it would be extremely beneficial it give kids that have a feeling of they don't belong somewhere like a sense of community because it really doesn't matter what you look like, what you do, what you believe. You come out, you skate, everybody wants to have fun. Everybody's so supportive, everybody cares. And it's so amazing that you can meet somebody that you've never ever seen before and that person suddenly, towards the end of the day, the lights are coming off during curfew and everything and everyone's out there with their cell phones out giving you some light, trying to make sure that you land that trick and it's just like that sense of belief that we have in each other that's extremely beneficial because like you go back to school the next day or you go to work the next day and you come out and you're like man I just want to skate again I want something to do you have a mindset on what you want to do and you're not out causing trouble and in Maryville especially, especially it's very easy to get in trouble Alright I'm uh, David Pomella I'm from uh, Michigan originally, and I moved down to Tennessee in 2007. Um, I've been a skateboarder since I was five years old, and I'm 46 years of age. I'm still longboard, and I was still pretty active skateboarding up to about 42, 44, and then uh, got some injuries I'm kind of working through. I education. I'm a mechanical design engineer. I guess twice over. Um, went to the University of Michigan, worked in automotive, and then uh, got my master's and we came down here and was working in marine. And then we had the Great Recession and at that time there really wasn't a whole lot of engineering gigs and my entire department got clipped. So uh, it seemed like a good point to try to live the dream, so I try to do basically a hobby shop of the things I love, which was bicycling and skateboarding. Okay, and that became mountain skate and bike. So, uh, before I started the shop, I, like I, I mentioned earlier, I'm sure you'll edit, but uh, we, I tried to get like a little park thing going. And the first thing is I presented like a, a, a grandiose plan, right? It was like go in, do a concrete, do a dig in a concrete, kind of thing and it seemed pretty easy to me that there was square footage to integrate it into either areas of the green belt um, or to put it in an area that is not utilized I mean there are basketball courts and tennis courts that weren't being utilized and the sits have been redone but holistically they are not utilized they, they, they are on a Saturday you might see a couple of people there for an hour I mean just, the usage is not there county mayor right? and uh, different than current and he was encouraging and he referred me to Tom Taylor who's the mayor and Tom was very receptive I mean he did his baby was working through the Blunt County Library so he was very encouraging and he gave me that analogy of footballs over after high school whereas if a kid's playing a violin they're gonna keep playing the violin right mm -hmm. so I, I presented um, various cases multiple times of uh, different scenarios of uh, one demographics and what you know it could grow into as far as the usage to have like a small park or a larger park um, so then the next thing that you're going up against was perception so obviously 
they're not spending on anything. That's that's another thing. Like they make they make football fields for football players. They make soccer fields for soccer players. Baseball fields for baseball players. Like why can't they make a skate park for skateboarders? Like they act like that's not even a sport whenever it is. Like you know. A skate park. If we got a skate park in Maryville, that would be tremendous. It would give kids. There's a lot of drugs here, I feel like, and it would give kids a place to go to get away from that. I know it's kind of corny and everyone says that, but when, there, yeah, when there's nothing to do, people do drugs. And when you're a kid, you know, having a skate park would be a big help, I feel like. I don't know if you know how many people live in Lenore City. They have a skate park. Loudoun City has a skate park. There's a couple throughout Knoxville, which one off of Cumberland Strip, there's one Fountain City, you have one off of North Shore, but yeah, they still will not put one here. Uh, Maryville used to have a skate park when I was like 10, back in like 1997, I don't know, 1997, something like that. But they said they tore it down because of graffiti. I don't mind graffiti on a on some concrete. I don't buy it gives it culture. It's fun to look at. Yeah, it's fun to look at. It's art to me. It was in that first corner right behind Midland. Okay. But what it was, it was it was like a drainage bowl. It wasn't really a skate park. Another thing too, you gotta think, they didn't have it fenced in, so people could come and go as they please and you gotta remember this was on a green belt. You don't have anyone watching it, it's not fenced in. So, I mean, anyone could come back here. I mean, there could have been way worse stuff happening back here than spray painting and stuff. You could rape someone back here or something. How come we don't go to Tyson every day? Uh, gas <laughs> puts wear and tear on your car. Uh, sometimes I get off work late and I don't have enough daylight. I mean, they got lights there and stuff, but I don't like to be out there in the dark and it's cold. I like to have a little sunlight when I'm skating. Yeah, and sometimes you don't want to you don't want to have to drive 30 minutes just to go skate. You know, you just want to go have a quick session. You drive 30 minutes there, you're not feeling it. Well, there's an hour on the road. All the surrounding cities and counties have skate parks, but the reason why we don't go to those is, I mean, they're they're really far, and like Knoxville's the closest ones. Fountain City, uh, you know, Tossin, and all that. They're they're either usually packed or they're just too far away. And I, and I hate to drag my family out that far if I want to go skate every day. You know. What would our lives be like without skateboarding? Not so good. <laughs> Not so good at all. Um, life, life, life in Maryville would pretty much suck without skateboarding. It's like the only thing we have to do here. Yeah, I agree to an extent. To an but extent. I think I would probably be in a lot of trouble with uh, drugs and probably around the or the wrong crowd. That's that's crazy to think about. I don't I don't know honestly. Skating is done a lot for me. Well, what would I do without skateboarding? Uh, Honestly, dude, I don't know. Skateboarding is part of my life. I mean, I wake up thinking about skating. I go to bed literally dreaming and thinking about skating. Most of my friends also I skate with. Uh, it's just part of my life. I think it's kind of lame that they they cater to all these other sports: basketball, football, baseball, tennis. They have a dog park. Everywhere is, everything else is getting supported. I just don't understand why a, a skate park wouldn't. The gathering. So do, do I think Maryville and Alcoa or Blount County should have a park? I think ultimately, yeah, I mean the kids are gonna, they're skating subdivisions. I mean, I live out in Louisville in the sticks. I'm on the edge of Friendsville and this is a, uh, what do you call it? This main road out there is Ralph Fels Farms and it's twisty, right? There's a little kid skateboarding down the hill of the road there. And you come over the crest blind and you go through the turns and the kid's there. Uh, I was thinking he's gonna get taken out at some point. But there's nowhere else for him to go. City appropriation levels, I don't think you have to do like hundreds of thousands of dollars in Maryland. I think you put 30 grand on a tennis court that you resurface and you see what your activity is. If it grows organically, then, you know, five, six years later, appropriate more. If, if you were to actually know a skateboarder, you realize what's going on with them, within their mind, how complex it is with all everything that we think about, everything that we learn. And most people who watch skateboarding, they're like, how do they do this? How do they do this? Like, it's because we love to do it. We, we push ourselves, and this is the outcome of it. But it's not even just that. There's people, you know, photography, videography, artists 
it branches out so far. It's, it's not just one thing, there's so many other things that impact it all together, make it one. We as skateboarders just want to give our community light on the subject. We're not wanting to hurt anybody. We don't want to do anything wrong. We don't want to mess up anybody's property. We just want to skate. We want to skateboard, we want to have fun. This is the only thing that we have to do, and it's the only thing that's keeping a lot of us out of trouble. I made a post on Maryville Speaks Out, a local page on Facebook, about bringing a skate park to Maryville, and every single reply was for it. We had over 80 comments on there, and everybody thought that it was an awesome idea. We're just wanting to shed some light on our community and let people know change is sometimes good. This change, I believe, would benefit a lot of us. Not only the existing skateboarders, but the youth skateboarders as well. If you took 1% of what they're putting into football over the last 20 years, there's your skate park. And the requirements, man. You know, I say it's a requirement because there's people paying taxes that want it. There's kids coming up through the community that would benefit from it. There's no reason to shun it. Thank you.